my name is Stephanie Navasu, and I'm a part-time MBAX student at the University of Laverne. In addition to that, I am a VP of HR for a manufacturing company in Southern California. I also am married for 13 years and have three kiddos. So I'm going to take you on a day in the life of what it's like to be a part-time student, full-time career woman, and mother. Look forward to spending some time with you and answering some of your questions. Take care. So as you can imagine, distance learning has been something that's been on the agenda, not just for me, but for my three children as well. Um, we've been in uh, going to school from home for since March. And so um, we're actually transitioning to a hybrid schedule this week. Uh, however, today is a normal day for my girls, normal being they'll be distance learning from home and my son is actually going in today. So uh, welcome to the journey that is uh, the Navasu home. Here are the girls right now. Girls say hi. They're getting ready. I have both of them downstairs just because their rooms don't have a desk set up. Um, so we have a junior high, seventh grade student over here, and then my fifth grader here. And they're getting ready just to get going. Luckily, my husband, his job is normally a work from home, even pre-pandemic. So I can go in while the kiddos stay here. And here's my son. We're going to be getting ready to leave pretty soon. All right, here I am at the office, dropped the kiddo off this morning and that went pretty smoothly. Uh, so now just a little bit behind um, my company and what we do, we are a manufacturing company. We're located just outside of downtown Los Angeles. And we we say we're a manufacturing company because we are, but we're really a, an ad agency masquerading behind or hiding behind a manufacturing company. So what we do is we, from conception to design, manufacturing, supply chain, pack out, logistics, you name it, full turnkey organization when it comes to POP displays as well as product packaging. So if you've ever gone to a big brown box retailer um, or any type of store really and you've either seen the temporary corrugated displays, semi-permanent displays and permanent displays and if you ever picked up a product off of a shelf or ordered anything online, chances are that that has come out of one of our boxes or one of the shelves or corrugated displays that we've manufactured. And so I'm gonna take you on a little bit of a journey of what that looks like here. Um, you'll, you'll never open a brown box or, or a designed box the same ever again after getting a little bit of a sneak peek about what we do here. And in addition, you'll get to see just a day in the life of what I can show you from a VP of HR. Um, so again, excited to bring you on this journey and uh, invite you all in uh, behind the scenes. All right, so I'm in the conference room here. I just wanna give you a little bit of a tour as much as I can. A lot of the stuff that we do work on is um, under confidentiality and NDA, because of course we don't wanna ruin the surprise for you to see what's going to be in the stores and online. Um, but we do have three um, buildings on our campus here, um, and then one other pack out facility about 30 minutes away in the next city over. Um, and so I am gonna show you a little sneak peek of our manufacturing facility. You can probably hear some of the machines going right now in the, in the lunch alarm, uh, but I want to bring you into our conference room to show you, of course, as an essential business, some of the safety precautions we've taken into effect um, due to COVID. And so this is just one of our conference rooms. Of course, um, about 80% of our organization is all working from home. Those are the office positions, marketing, customer service, sales, and we'll never fully transition back to the way things were. Uh, we have implemented a more so of a permanent work from home remote type of program. But for some of the employees that are considered essential of course our manufacturing and digital displays human resources has been coming in every day uh, we have a number of individuals from accounting that are on a transitional schedule and then of course our structural designers who need to uh, they're basically like architects so to speak and so some of the th things that we put into place of course we have these partitions that we've manufactured in-house in addition to um, the mask mandates etc little bit of a sneak peek there and this is located in every single one of our conference rooms of course um, in-person meetings have been only mission critical everything else has been conducted via zooms or microsoft teams so 
So now I'm gonna take you out to the plant, but first I have to change my shoes. All right, and here I am in my getup. Steel toe boots, safety vest on. I'll see you guys in a bit. How busy we are with industrial corrugated boxes. We have to bring some outside of our plant before we ship them. Mobility and recycling is everything for us. All right, so now I'm home. I hope you enjoyed a day in the life with me uh, in regards to what it looks like to be uh, not only a VP of HR, uh, but a part-time MBA student. I am now home because at 6.30 uh, Pacific time, my um, corporate finance class kicks off via Zoom. Uh, we meet twice a week and um, I got to change, get comfortable and get ready for the class. Um, so I'll continue to ask some questions uh, throughout the evening as well. And of course, you can always get in touch with me. I'm on Instagram at Stephanie Navasu, also uh, LinkedIn by the same handle and look forward to connecting and collaborating with this incredible community. Thanks so much. All right, and so I have a few moments before I um, start my corporate finance class. I did have to change. This is normal for me. Uh, no sense being in my all day long business clothes um, when I'm going to school directly from home. So I changed into my comfy clothes and of course I got my women belong in the C-suite hat. Um, but anyways, wanted to answer and talk to you a little bit more um, about my MBA program. So I am in the MBAX program at the University of Laverne uh, located in Laverne, California. And it is one of the things that I really like about it is that it is for experienced professionals. That's what the X stands for. So one of the um, qualifications that you need in order to get into the program is you have to have at least five years of experience um, in a professional setting before you can apply to be considered uh, to get into the school. And so being that I applied, um, cause I'm going into my second year. And so I applied about a year and a half ago, being that at the time I had 13 years of professional experience. Um, I was able to waive, uh, the graduate record exam, um, or the GMAT in order to get in. And so what I had to do, um, was of course, write uh, a personal statement in regards to what I wanted to do and why I wanted to do it. And then I needed to provide my resume. I also needed to provide um, two recommendations. And so at the time, um, I had the CFO and president of the company, uh, who I work very closely with. I now report directly to him. However, at the time, um, my I had a boss that reported to him. And so, but I did work very closely with him. And so he was able to write me a recommendation in addition to the VP of HR at the time also wrote me um, a recommendation who has been instrumental in um, my continued growth and career and success. Um, so that was basically what I needed to do. Obviously had to get my transcripts from my undergrad uh, that I was able to submit and um, I submitted all of the paperwork and had to wait a couple weeks before I heard that I finally got in. Obviously that was really nerve wracking from the standpoint of I did only apply to one school and I'll talk to you a little bit as to why I did only one school. So uh, it had always been a goal of mine to get um, my master's degree. Uh, I, I did wait a little bit longer than um, most people. Obviously, the MBAX program at the University of Laverne is a minimum of five years of professional experience. Of course, I had 13 at the time. One of the reasons why I did wait so long was because I am, you know, a typical millennial in the standpoint that I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, even after I graduated with my bachelor's degree, um, I um, all I knew was that I really wanted to make a difference in, in the lives of people. And so I just didn't necessarily know what that meant for from a career perspective. I do have my bachelor's degree from Cal State Long Beach. 
um, and it is in political science with a minor in economics. I thought how I wanted to help people was by going to law school, um, but that uh, didn't seem the, really the route. It just seemed like the next step based off of what my major was. So uh, about a semester before I graduated from college um, for my bachelor's degree, I did take an internship with an HR at, at a company with an HR team and really found, um, I think, my passion. I started out as a recruiter and kind of uh, built my resume that way. By the time I got to my current company, I did have 12 years of experience. I came in already as a manager uh, and was able to you know, grow really quickly. I found a really special company in the one that I do work for um, now. And then earlier this year, uh, the VP of HR, who was my mentor and has really um, you know, been instrumental in my career, like I mentioned before, um, a, a transition to a new company, I was um, promoted into her position and now report directly to our president and CFO. So back to why I only applied to one school. So obviously as a mom of three kids, uh, you know, a, a very busy, stressful, but fun career and a husband who also works and has a career, um, I was very particular with the type of program that I wanted and that I needed. Um, obviously cost uh, was a factor as well because I'm at the point where I've got, you know, children that, you know, are thinking about college and, you know, I, I want to be able to save money for them as well, um, while still putting my career progression and myself first as well. So uh, the University of Laverne kind of checked off all of the boxes for me. One, that it was uh, relatively close by. Two, the price tag um, wasn't as expensive as some of the other universities in the area, but still a phenomenal for, uh, program. And of course, one of the things that I really did like was the fact that the, there was the five uh, year minimum. One of the things that, of course, when I was looking at schools, I had reached out to uh, colleagues and individuals that I do report to. And I asked what, what were some of the things that they wish they had done differently when they were getting their MBAs or that they wish that the schools had done differently. And um, my current boss, uh, who is uh, our CFO and president, is a Harvard MBA. Um, my boss at the time uh, is an MBA from the Claremont Colleges. And both of them did express the fact that it was really important to find a program, being that I was 13 years into a career and at the management level at the time, that I go into a program that focused on experienced professionals. Because one of the things that they experienced was that there were individuals that transitioned straight from college or state from uh, their bachelor's degree right into an MBA program. And those individuals, while great, you know, didn't have a lot of the real world experience for the projects. So that was one of the things that I was told just being at where I was in my career um, and what I needed was that to find an experienced professionals type of program. So the University of Laverne checked off all of the boxes for me. Great program, great price tag, close to home, um, as well as it was a program that I could either choose to go in during the weeknights or I could um, sacrifice a Saturday. And so I chose that as well because obviously being a mom, um, working all day, I wanted to be home for my kids when they have softball, when they have various uh, you know, homework and projects. Obviously I need to be here for them to support them. And so the Saturday program was something that uh, worked well with my schedule. So it is an every other Saturday sort of situation uh, for an eight hour time period. That only lasted a couple of terms though because in my first year uh, of January 2020 of this year, um, I finished my second term, went into the spring term, and of course, then COVID hit, and it was, it's was it been distance learning ever since. So having courses in on the weeknight via Zoom um, have been easier as opposed to leaving work and having to drive into the University of Laverne with LA traffic, etc. So right now, the schedule um, with distance learning is very different than what it would have been had um, we still continued continue to be going in to the university for classes. Uh, I do anticipate that once we do transition back, whenever that will be, that I will go back into the Saturday program because for me personally, um, maybe it's just my personality or the fact that I'm an extrovert, but I do thrive on um, people interaction, especially in person. And so I do anticipate and do desire to want to go back to the every other Saturday situation. It's just different for me. And I appreciate that in-person collaboration and dialogue.
All right, everybody, so that's it. I had so much fun um, inviting you in on a little sneak peek of what my day looks like. I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you would like to connect, uh, you can follow me um, or connect with me via LinkedIn at Stephanie Navasu or here on Instagram at Stephanie Navasu as well. And just one final tidbit. I know there's a lot of noise going on in the world right now. Um, we are being called to uh, change the way we learn, change the way we work. Uh, but I just want to, you know, impress upon you to keep going forward. Keep putting one foot in front of the other because here's the deal. You can either go through it or you can choose to grow through it. And um, especially in the world of business, as future business leaders, as current business leaders and MBA students, it is important that we always choose growth um, because that is what's going to catapult us not only into the future, not only to continue to innovate and stay on top of things, but uh, to also set an example and be an example for others because what we go through isn't for us, it's for those that come after us. So once again, thank you so much uh, for your time, for spending the day with me, and I look forward to connecting with all of you.